subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Komodo Dragon. Hi everybody, my name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. What is it, Hero? What did you find? Hero, it's an egg. Did you scare the bird away from her egg? An egg is one of the ways a baby animal gets born. Most eggs have shells that protect the baby animal inside. The baby bird will have to crack open the shell and push its way out. See, it's pretty hard. We need to find a warm place to put the egg so that it will hatch. Great idea, Hero. Let's bring it to the treehouse. I think the baby bird is coming out. That's weird. Baby birds don't look like that. It's not a bird. It's a lizard. I wonder how it got here. You know what we should do? Let's make a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, little lizard. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, brother. The computer is looking for information about the lizard. Bingo! This lizard is a Komodo dragon. A dragon? Yes, a Komodo dragon. It's a type of lizard. Despite its name, it doesn't breathe fire. <laughs> it's also known as the Komodo monitor. Where does it come from? Komodo dragons are found mainly on the islands of Southeast Asia. The Komodo dragon you found comes from here. So what do Komodo dragons eat? Komodo dragons eat other animals, such as birds, mammals, and other lizards. It's a carnivore. Baby Komodo dragons eat insects and other small animals. Hmm, there aren't that many insects in our garden. We should bring baby Komodo back to the island it came from. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Ranger Rocky. Welcome to the rainforest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you brought a young male Komodo dragon. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We're here to bring baby Komodo back to its home. That's great, Leo. But make sure you find a place with no adult Komodo dragons. No adult Komodo dragons? Why not? After laying her eggs, the mother Komodo dragon will leave them to survive on their own. And adult Komodo dragons might eat the baby lizards. Oh dear! Eat the baby lizards? How will they survive on their own? Young Komodo dragons will live in the trees to hide from predators, such as larger lizards and snakes. When they are bigger, they will go down to walk the land. Then we should help him find a new home away from other lizards and snakes. That's right, Leo. Don't forget, young Komodo dragons live in the trees. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank you, Ranger Rocky. What is it, Hero? <gasps> Baby Komodo is gone. Where did he go? Let's follow Hero. There you are, Hero. Oh no, 
Baby Komodo is being chased by an adult Komodo dragon. We need to help Baby Komodo. What should we do? Wait, the baby dragon is almost at that tree. He's safe if he can climb up. Oh no! A second Komodo dragon appeared. To scare away a Komodo dragon, we need to make loud noises. Loud noises? Okay, Hero, you know what to do. Look! The Komodo dragons are confused because of the noise. I've got you, baby Komodo. We did it! We found an empty spot in a tree for the baby Komodo dragon. Great work, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found a young Komodo dragon in our garden. We learned that a Komodo dragon is a lizard. So we went to the rainforest and found a safe, empty spot in a tree. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Equatorial Spitting Cobra. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. I wonder where that frog is going. Let's follow it, too. Careful, Hero. You'll scare the frog away. Huh? Something else is hidden inside the bush? Ah! A snake! Better keep a distance, Hero. It's a snake in our garden. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Yikes! Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. I sure did. The cobra you found is an equatorial spitting cobra, also known as a black spitting cobra. It is called a spitting cobra because it is able to shoot venom from its fangs. Venom is a toxin, like poison, and is found in some animals such as cobras. Venom can be passed to a person or another animal through a bite or sting. Many cobras defend themselves by injecting venom through their bite, but a spitting cobra prefers to spit or spray venom at a predator's eyes to scare them away. The spitting cobra wiggles its head the same way your eyes move. This helps the cobra's aim when it sprays its venom. That's scary! Actually, spitting cobras are shy animals. They only attack when they feel threatened. Still, equatorial spitting cobras can shoot venom up to three meters away. So it's best to keep your distance. I'll make sure to remember that, Katie. Equatorial spitting cobras live in different forests in Southeast Asia, where they eat small animals like lizards, frogs, and rats. Hmm, I don't think it's safe for us to be near the spitting cobra. We should return the cobra to its natural home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Welcome to the forest, Junior Rangers. Ah, I see you've brought a special friend with you today. Here, you'll need these if you're going to be near that spitting cobra. 
Glasses? Safety glasses, Leo. The venom from spitting cobras can harm your eyes. That's why it's very important to wear these glasses for protection. When threatened, the spitting cobra will aim to shoot its venom at an enemy's eyes. The venom that the spitting cobra sprays causes pain to the eyes and sometimes blindness. You will know when you've gotten too close to a cobra when it flares the flap of skin around its head and neck. This flap of skin is called a hood. A cobra will spread its hood when it feels threatened. I see. We'll be careful not to get too close to the cobra. We're trying to find the spitting cobra's home. Do you know where we should look? Spitting cobras like to live near water, in burrows or under rocks, where they can hunt for food. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Ranger Rocky. What's wrong with the cobra? The spitting cobra is getting into a defensive pose. Why does it keep flicking its tongue? Spitting cobras have a very good sense of smell. They use their tongues to pick up scents in the air. Do you think it might have picked up the scent of a predator? <laughs> <gasps> they don't look very friendly. They are mongooses. It says here that the mongoose is the cobra's natural predator. Did you see that? The cobra sprayed venom at that mongoose, but the mongoose looks fine. It says here the mongoose is resistant or immune to cobra venom. That means cobra venom has no effect on the mongoose. What do we do now? We're surrounded. I'll clear a path for us. Thanks, Katie. Hold on tight, everyone. Goodbye, little friend. We did it. We found the spitting cobra's home. Great job, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found an equatorial spitting cobra in our garden. We learned that the spitting cobra can spray venom when threatened. That's why it's best to keep a safe distance from the spitting cobra. So we went to the forest and brought it to its natural home, far away from other humans. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The greater mouse deer. Hi everybody, my name is Leo and I am a Junior Ranger and this is my puppy Hero. I'm picking blueberries. Look how ripe they are. Mmm, and they taste really fresh and sweet. Let's pick blueberries together. It'll be fun. That's strange. Where have the blueberries gone? They were right here a moment ago. Look, they're disappearing. What is it, Hero? Is that a deer? Hmm, it looks like a deer, but it's so small. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hold still, little guy. Hi, Katie. So if it's not a deer, what is it? Hi, Leo. The animal you've just found is a mouse deer. It's called a mouse deer because it has hooves, like a deer. But its face and body is similar to that of a mouse. There are different types of mouse deer, and the one you found is called a greater mouse deer. Why is it called a greater mouse deer? That's because of all the different mouse deer, it's the largest. Still, mouse deer are small in size compared to other hooved animals. 
In fact, they are the smallest hoofed animals in the world. Being small helps them hide better in the wild. They have long, pencil-thin legs that make them quick on their feet. They are also nocturnal animals, which means they are active during the night. This is why the mouse deer is almost never seen. I see. We almost missed it eating our blueberries. The greater mouse deer likes to eat fruits, but they also eat leaves and aquatic plants. By the way, it lives in different countries in Southeast Asia. The one you found comes from this place. Hmm, I don't think there are enough blueberries in our garden. We should return it to its home. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the rainforest. What are those things, Ranger Rocky? These are animal traps. I found them by the bushes. Luckily, no animal was caught, and I'm making sure they never will. What happens to animals that get caught in the traps? They might be taken for their meat or fur. Anyway, it's bad news for the animal, so better watch out for these traps. Ah, I see you've brought along a greater mouse deer. What a lovely creature. Yes, Ranger Rocky. We found it in our garden and we're trying to return it to its home. Greater mouse deer mostly live alone or with just one partner. Their homes or territories are quite small. Just keep a lookout for a place with lots of shrubs, bushes, and plants close to water. These animals like to live near water because they can hide in it from predators, while at the same time live in thick undergrowth. Undergrowth? Undergrowth is the shrubs and other plants growing beneath trees in the forest. The greater mouse deer uses the undergrowth to travel through tiny tunnel-like trails in the forest. It helps them to stay hidden. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. I guess we'll have to walk the rest of the way. Come on, everybody. <laughs> what is it, Hero? The mouse deer is gone? Where is it? It's so hard to see anything here. What was that? The mouse deer might be in danger. Hero, lead the way. The mouse deer is trapped. This must be one of the animal traps Ranger Rocky warned us about. I can't lift the door. I think there's some kind of lock on it. That's it, Hero. Let's all dig a hole together. That's a great idea. We can make a tunnel for the mouse deer. Almost there. It's still not big enough. We can use this. It's working. You can do it, mouse deer. We did it. We saved the mouse deer. Yay! Look, another mouse deer. And they recognize each other. We did it. We found the mouse deer's home. Great job, everybody. Hooray! Yay! a greater mouse deer in our garden. We learned that the mouse deer feeds on fruits and plants and lives close to water and forest undergrowth. So we went to the rainforest and brought it back home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The honeybee. Hi, everybody.
everybody. My name is Leo. I'm a junior ranger, and this is my puppy Hero. It's a perfect day for a picnic. We have chocolate cookies, cakes, apples, and bananas. And look, I even have your favorite doggy snacks. Not so fast, Hero. We have to wait for Katie. Let me call her. A bee. Hey, don't go near the cakes. Hero, careful. You're knocking over all the food. I wonder where it came from. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. This bee is a honeybee. A honeybee? Yes, a honeybee. There are many different types of bees, but this one is an eastern honeybee. It has distinct golden yellow and brown stripes across its body. Where do they come from? Eastern honeybees come from South and Southeast Asia. They can be found in many countries. There, the honeybees collect nectar from flowers by eating the nectar. When these worker honeybees return to the beehive, they give the nectar to other worker honeybees. These honeybees will put the nectar in the honeycomb cells and use their wings to fan it. This will change the nectar into honey. The bees will use the honey as a food source. So that's how honey's made. Hey, what kind of shape is that? That's a hexagon. Honeycomb cells are shaped that way because they use the least amount of beeswax to build a beehive. Honeybees prefer to build their beehives in small spaces like hollow trees. Hmm. If we want to have a peaceful picnic, we should bring this honeybee back to its beehive. Come and join us. That's great, Leo. See you downstairs. Rocky. Hello, Junior Rangers. Welcome to the forest. Ah, is that a honeybee? Yes, Ranger Rocky. We are trying to bring him back to his beehive. Not him, Leo. This is a female bee. It's a she. This is clear from her yellow stripes. And all worker bees are female. Worker bees are responsible for gathering nectar, building the honeycomb cells, feeding the babies, Tending to the queen bee... There's a queen? Yes, the queen makes all the baby bees. It has a longer body and smaller wings. The male bees, also known as drones, are rounder in shape and have bigger eyes. These drones only have one job, which is to help queen bees from other beehives make babies. The drones don't have a sting like the female worker bees do. A uh, sting Honeybees only sting if they feel their beehive is in danger. These hard-working creatures just want to protect their colony. Where can we look to help this honeybee find her colony, Ranger Rocky? Hmm, bees are attracted to brightly colored flowers. Perhaps you can start looking for those. Good luck, Junior Rangers. Thank, Thank you, Ranger Rocky. Rocky. Here we are at the flower field. I see flowers, butterflies, birds, but no bees. Let's try to look for a beehive in a tree. What is it, Hero? You already found a beehive? Great work. But this bee looks a bit different, though. Careful, Junior Rangers. That's not a honeybee. That's a wasp. And unlike the honeybee, a wasp can be very aggressive. Oh no! More of them are coming out! That's bad news, Leo. Honeybees will die after they sting, but not wasps. 
They can sting multiple times. You better run. There's some water. Let's take out our snorkel masks and jump right in. That was close. Oh no, where's the honeybee? The jar is gone. It's the honeybee. She's hiding in a honeysuckle flower. Come in, honeybee. We'll make sure we stay far away from those wasps. Goodbye, bee. We did it. We found the beehive of the honeybee. Yay! Yay! We found a honeybee in our garden. We learned that honeybees have workers, a queen, and drones, and that they make honey. So we went to a forest and found a tree with a hollow that contains a hive. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there.